Hello everyone. Uh, so today I want to talk about a topic that is sometimes um, hard to accept it, to acknowledge it, um, to live by it, and that is faith. So um, a lot of us want to have faith in something um, because life can just get really, really hard. And when we try to take control of things on our own, it just seems like it goes nowhere. And um, faith is something that um, we have when we have a deep relationship with God. Um, it's actually the foundation of having a relationship with God and um, because you put all your faith in him um, that is one of the biggest purposes of having a relationship with him you no longer try to um, control things in your life you, you know what what doesn't work out doesn't work out and um, you put all of your faith and trust in God and um, that's hard to do sometimes. It's not always easy. Um, it's easier said than done. Um, especially when we're going through a really hard time, we're like, how can I put all of my faith in God? And, you know, and you don't see things turning around for the good. Um, but God's ways are always good for us. And sometimes we don't see the results right away but it's always good i have been through situations in my life where i'm like why is this happening um you know where is god at and the i just had faith in him um because when i tried to deal with the situation on my own it just went nowhere um, and I put all my faith in God and I didn't see the good in it right away but later when I realized how my life had just completely changed around I was like oh my gosh that situation that I was in was supposed to happen it happened for a reason god had a much bigger plan for me than i had for myself and that's how god works that is the god that we serve that we love that we trust that we believe in and um so i wanted to talk about um i was reading hebrews 11 and it shows um, great examples of faith. And it says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. And we know that God cannot literally be seen. Um, we can feel his presence. We can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, but he cannot be seen. So having faith, even though you cannot see him, is one of the biggest um, things that you can have in your relationship with God um, and it always it always tends to bring me a lot closer to him um, I always just pray and say you know God I don't know what's going on right now or I don't know why this is happening but I have faith that you are leading 
me in the right direction. This is happening for a reason, a purpose much greater that I could ever imagine. And later on, I, I see that, you know, it was, it, it's, it's always for your good. God is always good. Um, so then God, so the Bible, um, continues to talk about, um, the faith that a lot of people, um, had. And, um, so verse 11, um, four says it was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Canaan did. Um, Abel and Canaan, uh, were Adam and Eve's, um, first children Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man, and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. And then it goes on to talk about many, many other people that had um, faith in God and how, you know, things just um, went... Um, good for them um there was one how uh, sarah was not able to um have a child and later uh you know she believed that god would keep his promises and he did and um now there is a point that i want to bring up so the beginning point of faith is believing in God's character. He is who he says. The end point is believing in God's promises. He will do what he says. When we believe that God will fulfill his promises, even though we don't see those promises materializing yet, we demonstrate true faith. God called the universe into into existence out of nothing he declared that it was to be and it was our faith is in the god who created the entire universe by his word god's word was awesome power when he speaks do you listen and respond how can you better prepare yourself to respond to god's word so um how can you prepare yourself to respond to God's word? So, it, you know, I, I ask myself that. And when I need to listen to God's word, which is all the time, um, I need to be silent so that I can hear him. Um, I need to be still and know that he is God. Um, like I've said before, when I try to do things on my own, it all just kind of didn't uh, get better. And you, know, you just get tired of it. You get tired of that struggle of always trying to say, no, I, I got this, I could do this, I could do this. You know, and that's why I always say like, everybody needs Jesus everybody because life is too hard to try to just handle it on our own and with God you know things are not just always perfect and good people think that when you give your life to God and you dedicate your life to God that um, you're not gonna have any more problems life is gonna be so good and that is not true what happens is that you still do have trials and tribulations and problems and in life it's not perfect it's never going to be perfect but with god by your side everything just seems so much more manageable you have peace you have peace that is priceless i mean there i've been through situations where people will be like how did you or how are you not freaking out right now or how 
um, you know, or wow, you know, that person did that to you and you didn't do anything about it. And it's like, I don't need to get revenge on anybody. I don't need to speak bad about anybody. Um, I don't need to get back or, you know, say karma, uh, will get back to that person. No, what I do is I pray and um i truly just leave it in god's hands um is it easy sometimes no you know as humans we want to react we want to react uh, when someone hurts us and treats us badly but god doesn't want us to do that god says trust me you know have faith in me that um you're gonna be okay and this is going to work out for your good, you know? And then I always end up seeing the person that, um, that did want, you know, that said hurtful things or, you know, they might not have a relationship with God and they try to control their own lives or, you know, their opinion always matters. I always tend to see that person just kind of like always, um, you can see them kind of just living a life with um, anger and um, and hurt and pain. And so you just say, you know, you tell yourself, you're like, how can I respond to this person when they're acting, they're behaving this way because they're in pain, they're hurt, they have not given their lives to Jesus. And um, so, yeah, I mean, that's really how I get through a lot of things too. I'm like, um, you know, just, um, just actually, you know, just um, think about that other person and why are they behaving that way? And um, it always makes me just pray and do what's best what God wants me to do. I always say, you know, God, what do you want me to do in this situation? And God's never going to say, you know what, let me tell you something. You need to go up to that person and you need to tell them this and this and that. God's never going to say that. You know, God is a good God. Everything that comes from God is good. And um, yeah, so God is never going to steer you in the wrong direction or tell you to give someone an attitude or treat them wrong. And when you start to behave in a way that really surprises people, like they thought you were going to behave a certain way and you behaved another way because you are listening to what God, God wants you to do, boy, does that show other people what God is capable of to do in your life, you know? And that's really the purpose. The purpose is to live like Christ, um... Not to just say, oh, God is good all the time and say that you believe in him and have faith in him and then do whatever it is that you want to do. That's not what God wants for us. He wants us to be obedient. He wants us to obey him, to listen to him, to go to him for everything, for everything. And um, we can't just pick and choose what we want to give to God. You know, we have to give him everything. God is a jealous God for his children and he wants us to surrender everything our attitudes our bad ways and I mean everyone's gonna fall at some time some point you know I can't say that I'm perfect in any way there's times where I have an attitude or I say things that I wasn't supposed to say but you know the my relationship with God always like brings me right back to where I need to be because I feel bad. I feel guilty because I'm like, I think to myself, who is laughing right now? Is it God who's happy or is it the devil and the enemy who's happy? And it's the enemy because the enemy's like, I got you way right where I want you to be back to the person that you used to be with the attitude with the foul language with the with you know 
being a part, doing things that are part of the world. And I always think about how hurt God is. And it just makes me kneel down and pray and say, God, I am so sorry. Um, help me. Help me to not be this way. I ask for forgiveness, Lord. And God forgives us. Just always repent of your sins. Um, read the Bible. All the answers are in the Bible. Everything that you want to know is is in here. If any doubts, any questions, it's all in the Bible. Um, so I also want to um, read this. It says, believing that God exists is only the beginning. Even the demons believe that much. God will not settle for mere acknowledgement of his existence. He wants your faith that leads to a personal, dynamic relationship. Um, but does faith make sense, really? Do you believe because faith makes sense or because faith doesn't need to make sense? Some Christians think people cannot understand God and should not try. Other believes that nothing true is irrational, including true faith. The truth is God gave us minds that should be developed and used. To ignore intellectual growth is to live a stunted and naive life. God wants our trust and faith even while we ponder and wonder about so many matters mysterious to us. Um, and let's see, so I also wanted to, okay, and then in Hebrews 12, um, it talks about God's discipline proves his love, and, um, this is also very important to talk about because, some people will, a lot of us, everyone, will think, well, God is a good God. He will not punish us. You know, he's not going to let anything bad happen to us. And that is true. God is a very good God. But when bad things happen to us, um, you know, again, this falls back to having faith and believing and trusting in God and knowing that there is a greater purpose, one that you might not um, see or, or you know, acknowledge. And, and you're like, but, but why, you know? And one thing we should never do is really ever question God why. And that's also very hard to do when we're going through, you know, trying times. Um, but yeah, so... Um, I bring this up, you know, because discipline, his discipline proves his love. A lot of people will think that, you know, well, I'm going to give my life to Christ. Life is going to be really, really good. And it is, I promise you, it's really, 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 really good. Um, but it doesn't mean that it's perfect. It doesn't mean that there's no struggles. And actually the struggles and the problems and all that, just, wow really brings me closer to God um yeah it just it really uh because it allows me to 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 um to speak to him to have more time with him to trust him to need him so imagine if life was just perfect all the time like why would you need God you know, um, and that's just, that's really the, the, the root of it. Life is not perfect. It's not perfect for anybody. I don't care what anybody's Instagram page looks like. It is not perfect. And, um, we all need Jesus. We all need Jesus. Um, so in, um, verse 12, um, verse 12 5 he says my child don't make light 
of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you for the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child and um, it says here who loves his child more the father who allows the child to do what will harm him or the one who corrects trains and even punishes the child to help him learn what is right it's never pleasant to be corrected and disciplined by god but his discipline is a sign of his deep love for us when god corrects you see it as proof of his love and ask him what he is trying to teach you yeah i've been disciplined many times and out of that discipline, did I come out a better woman? You know, I didn't even know that I needed that discipline. Um, but yeah, I've come out a better, stronger woman. Um, and I could have, I could have never, ever in my life changed to be the person that I am today without God like there's just no way there is no way I am not that good I'm a good person but being a good person is not enough and I mean I'm just so grateful and thankful that I decided to give my life to Jesus because life is so much better with him so much better I mean Definitely not perfect, definitely not struggle proof, but when you have God on your side and you are just, you have that deep relationship with him, there's like nothing in the world that can bring you down, like nothing, nothing, you know, and you, um, I've become more familiar, like just with even, um, talking about death like death is no longer a bad thing you know like if you know where you're going it's a beautiful thing you're gonna meet Jesus face to face the bad thing is dying and not knowing where you're going that's sad so I encourage you today right now at this moment to really consider accepting Jesus Christ into your life. You don't want to go and you don't know when you're going and and you don't want to go and not know where you're going. Hell is a real place and heaven is a real place. And if you accept Jesus today into your life, it will never be the same. It will never be the same. He is amazing. He loves us unconditionally. He wants the best for us. He, um, he fulfills every single need. Every need. You can't... You cannot fulfill the needs in your life and be satisfied as humans nothing ever ever satisfies us like Jesus does I am grateful that I could um, have a relationship with Jesus before I became a nurse becoming a nurse wasn't going to satisfy me it's a career. I mean, I know a lot of nurses that are depressed, abuse drugs, um, have ton loads of problems that they talk about at work, and of course try to deal with them on their own because you know they don't have a relationship with God. Um, but yeah, that wasn't gonna fulfill me. Um, marriage. A man fulfill me <laughs> temporarily. 
I mean, that man, that husband is human. And he's going to make mistakes. He's going to let you down. Just like a wife will. Just like your children will. God, he is perfect. He will never, never, ever, ever let you down. Never. And so money, career, um, marriage or love or relationships, um, all of that is just a temporary fulfillment. But God's love and just um, his, uh, his presence in your life, I mean, that is just nothing else can fulfill you more than that. I promise you nothing else. And, um, and it doesn't mean that you don't want to accomplish those other goals. You want to get married. You want to have children. You want to um, have a wonderful career and all that. And that's all great. But first, um, focus on your relationship with God. And then all the other things will come, you know, through Him. You know, and they'll come ten times better than you ever imagined, you know. Um... So yeah, definitely encourage you to accept Jesus Christ today. Don't keep waiting because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. And um, another topic here says, we must not live with only our own survival in mind. Others will follow our example. And we have a responsibility to them if we are living for Christ as we claim to, does your example make it easier for others to believe in and follow Christ and to mature in him? Or would those who follow you end up confused and misled? And, you know, um, um, it's very important to, uh, you know, when you accept Jesus in your life, to continue to seek him every single day. Seek him, pray, um, you know, start just changing all the things in your life. The music you listen to, the people you hang out with, the way you talk, everything. The way you respond to people, all of that will start changing little by little. I promise you, it all starts to change. And not on your own. God's helping you through all of that. And, um, but you just got to give it all to him. You can't say, you know, God, well, I give my life to you. Um, but you know, well, this is the way that I was born. I, you know, I'm Puerto Rican or whatever. And I have an attitude and, you know, God accepts me as the hot mess that I am. No, not really. He does not, you know, it's, it doesn't work that way. You give it all to him all and um i promise you that it's gonna um you're just gonna look at yourself in the mirror one day and be like wow i am not the person that i used to be and you feel so much better you have so much peace i mean peace is priceless it's priceless um and i know a lot of us like wow so many people this is a broken world that we live in um, you know, a lot of people, you know, through social media will, um, will look like they have peace. But let me tell you, without Jesus, we are broken. We're broken. We live in a broken world. So the only way to live out of this world is to live for Jesus. Because when you live for Jesus, you're not living in the things of this world. You're in the, you're living in the world, but you're not a part of the things of the world, you know? So, um, and again, you know, we're not perfect. Living for Jesus doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect, but it definitely, um, it changes so many aspects of your life. Um, it gives you such great purpose. Like I have so much purpose in my life and it's not because I, I have a career. It's not because, um, you know, I'm a wife or, you know, all these other things, these wonderful things that, you know, I've been blessed with. It's not any of that. I have such great purpose because God, he, I allow him to guide me. I have faith in him. I trust him with every part of my life. 
So, um, I think that was it that I wanted to talk about today. Um, let's see. Yes. And, um, Hebrews 13, it says concluding words and, um, it's 13 verse five. And it says, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. So I will have no fear. And um, verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So do not be attached by strange new ideas. Your strength comes from God's grace, not from rules about food, which don't help those who follow them. And um, that first A can be broken down a little more. Um, Though human leaders have much to offer, we must keep our eyes on Christ, our ultimate leader. Unlike any human leaders, he will never change. Christ has been and will be the same forever. In a changing world, we can trust our unchanging Lord. Amen. So that's it for um, for now. I'm going to try to um, do a few more of these videos. I want to really share the word with um, those who don't know Christ. Uh, maybe you have just started a relationship with Christ and you're just kind of like lost and don't know what to do. I know um, right now we're going to the, through this um, pandemic and a lot of churches are closed and um, it can be, it's, it's just a really, really hard time right now. Really hard time. Um, I've even had to really, um, straighten myself out a little bit and say, um, you know, just cause churches are closed doesn't mean that you can't, uh, open this thing. This right here, we don't need a church. You make your own church at home, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I had to, you know, and, um, and still, I need to still spend more time with God. You know, so we get so busy and we do want to do this, we want to do that. And, you know, where's our time with God, you know? Um, but, yeah, so I want to definitely share the word with um, everyone who's, you know, wanting to listen, who needs a change, who wants to accept Christ in their lives. Um, and I'm always here to pray for um, anyone who needs it. We all need prayer. We all need Jesus. Like we are, we all need to come together in this. No one is better than anybody else. Like the world shows it. I mean, look, look, look how, look at, look how we're all like living. It's, this was not God's intent for us in this world. Um, but the good news is that, um, we're waiting for Jesus Christ to return. And when he returns, um, those who have been faithful, his faithful servants, um, know where they're going. And that is good, good, good news. So, um, yeah, we look forward to that promise from Jesus. Um, so that's it for today. I love you all. And I hope you guys all have a good night.